to tell you a lot about her life because I figure she's going to talk about that as she goes along. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> but I, I met Jean Jones because I got involved in uh, the Miss Senior America contest in 2018 and uh, went as Miss Senior Utah to the thing in 2019. To the, but the people who have been involved in the Miss Senior America contest have a club called the, the Cameo. Cameo. Cameo Club. And it is the performing, uh, performing part of the Miss Senior America. And we go around to rest homes in the area and put on programs. And this is where I met Jean Jones because instead of dancing or singing or playing an instrument, she showed all the things that she makes. And it is amazing. And so I said, Jean, can you come talk to the Cameo Club for 45 minutes? She said, oh, sure. And she's brought her two sons with her to help with all the technology. And she's brought her good friend, Janet Siemens, Siemens? Siemens. Okay. who is also a member of Cameo Club, who is a fabulous singer. But today she is acting as Jean's helper. And I'm thrilled to turn the time over to Jean Jones, who is 88 years old and still going strong and doing all these fabulous things, including making the dress that she's wearing. I, I do have to thank my two sons and my dear friend for all the help they've done to bring all this stuff up here. <laughs> anyway, uh, the title of my program is called A Lifetime of Creativity. This is the home I grew up in, in Smithfield, Utah. And that is my, uh, the little girl and me. She, we were cousins. She was 12 days older than me and we did everything together until we grew up and she got married. And the next group of pictures shows <coughs> my mother and father, Bessie and Earl Alsop, and they were religious and had a strong background of hard work, and they taught all of us children to work. And I learned right in the beginning, if I wanted something, I could earn it or make it myself. And my mother sewed everything. She sewed all of our clothes, and uh, she taught me to sew and I was making doll dresses for my little tiny doll right here. And uh, by the time I was six years old, mother had an electric sewing machine and I learned to sew on that. And I made that little dress. I made a bunch of them, but that was the only one I kept. And then when I was in primary, I made, I learned to crochet and I made a hot pad. That was the extent of my crocheting for many, many years. <laughs> And then, um, by the time I was seven years old, I was hemming all the flower sacks for dish chows. And you probably all use some of those. <laughs> and as I grew, I started in 4-H. And the first year in 4-H, we made an apron, and then we made a gathered skirt. And then this dress I made when I was 10, and then the next one, I was 11. And then when I was 12, I had to make one for me and a child. And that's my little niece who was not quite three at the time. And uh, most of my things, I would, we entered them in the county comp city competition. And my things always went to the county fair. And many times at the county fair, I'd win there and they would go on to the state fair. And my 4-H mates used to say, her mother made it. Well, <laughs> mother didn't make it, but she made me do it over if it wasn't perfect. She'd examine it and she'd say, no, that's not good enough, Jean. You unpick that and start over. <laughs> so I would do that. And when I was in junior high, I was making almost all my clothes. 
And when I got to high school, I was even making formals for the school dances. And as a senior in high school, I made a red wool suit. And this is a photo of my teacher and one of the other classmates. And uh, we both entered the Make It Yourself with Wool Contest. And that was held in uh, the mezzanine at J.C. Penney's store there in Logan. And I won that contest and went to the Salt Lake to the uh, statewide competition. And I did come in second to a gal who was a major in sewing at the university. So I thought I did pretty good on that. And um, I went to North Cash High School. You can see the picture there of the school. And I was the yearbook editor. So I designed the yearbook and did all of the work to put it together and arrange for the photos and everything. And uh, my cousin Carol was getting married after our junior year. We were both 16 years old, kind of young to get married. And her mom did it so. So she came to my mother and said, would mother make her wedding dress for her daughter? And mother said, no, I won't, but Jean will. <laughs> so I made that wedding dress. I was 16 years old when I made that. And then I was planning on being married in the fall after my senior year in high school. And the day after I graduated from high school, I went to work at uh, Utah State as a secretary for the department head, a department head. And during lunch hour, I used to sit on the quad and cover the buttons and make buttonhole loops for my wedding dress. I did some of this handwork, the little luncheon cloth, that's for a card table. Card tables used to be a lot smaller than they are now. <laughs> and I embroidered a lot of pillowcases. And then I did crochet master outfit. So I crocheted different colored uh, lace on handkerchiefs. And uh, the wedding dress, this is my wedding dress. And it used to be white, but age has changed the color on it. And it does have 28 different covered buttons and buttonhole loops. And my husband, Boyd, uh, graduated from college and he entered the Air Force. And uh, he, was, he, he was in ROTC and he went into the Air Force as a second lieutenant. And we moved to Tucson, Arizona. And at that time, I was pregnant and a friend had taught me how to knit. And I knit several pairs of booties and made a sweater and cap for my new baby. I also made a lot of baby clothes, most of them for boys, as my husband knew it would be a boy. He came from a family of four boys, and he said, Joneses don't have girls. Well, he was right. We only had boys. And the last one I knew was going to be a girl. That was Steve over here. And I made all these little pink dresses and sunsuits and everything because he was born in the summer. And then here he was born and it's a boy. So those little pink things got used as baby gifts for other people because Boyd would never have allowed one of his boys to be dressed in pink. <laughs> Our sons were born in three different states, Arizona, Texas, and Colorado. And as the boys grew, I made these little sport coats and pants so they could have them to wear to church, something that would look nice at church. I also made them these costumes for Halloween. And uh, Steve and a little neighbor boy who were the same age, they were always wanting to dress up and I made him Batman, Superman, uh, Cowboy, Indian, Robin, all those different little people that were popular at that time for the little kids. He had all kinds of costumes. And one day when we were in California, we passed a shopping center. And Steve, he was only three years at the time, and he said, Mom, what's that? I said, it's a shopping center. What's a shopping center? It's a place where ladies buy things. What do they buy? Shoes, dresses. Mom, ladies don't buy dresses, they buy materials. <laughs> and I guess that's because he'd spent a lot of his short life in the material store. <laughs> and uh, 
We've been living in a rental house in California and a new area was opening in Saratoga and we decided to buy a home out there. I drew up a floor plan and had the builders turn it into blueprints and build a home for us. They would only put in painted woodwork, so I didn't want that. And so I asked if I paid extra for oak and then stained it myself if I could do that. Yeah, they said that was okay. And then I bought mirror tiles and tiled one of the walls in the uh, hall area, the hall and closet area, so I'd have a place where I could see what I was doing when I was making my clothes. And I also wanted to have swag draperies. That was becoming very popular and I knew we couldn't afford those. So I went over to the department store and saw some hanging there and I looked at them closely and then I went out and bought fabric and then I came home and made them. And we had been making grapes, resin grapes in Relief Society. You probably all remember that. Okay. I was driving down the street one day and there was a home under construction and I could see that one of the glass doors had broken. And I knew that was tempered glass, and tempered glass doesn't break into sharp things, it breaks in little crumbly pieces. So I went to the sales office and I said, is it all right if I go in and gather up that broken glass? They thought I was a little crazy, but they said, okay. So I gathered up the glass, and then I went to the store and I bought a fiberglass fabric. It used to come in a roll in strips about this wide, and I wrapped I got a beach ball, blew up the beach ball, wrapped it in the fiberglass, coated it with the resin, and then I let that set up, and then I took all those broken chips of glass and put them in colored resin, and then I coated the, the ball with the colored chips of glass, and I left an opening both at the top and the bottom, so I was able to punch a hole in the beach ball, pull that out, and then I went to the electrical supply store and bought parts to turn that into a lamp. And that's my hanging lamp. And dumb as I was, I left it in the house when we moved. <laughs> so anyway, um, this next group of pictures shows some items that I have made. And if you notice, I even have a purse I made to go with the coat and the suit. And uh, while we were living in California, my friend and I signed up to take art classes in adult education. We would be assigned a subject and we could all choose whatever we wanted, however we wanted to paint something in that particular subject. Well, we had been assigned to paint mountains. So I painted the mountains and the teacher looked at my work and she says, well, your work is good, but they don't, you never have deciduous and evergreen trees grow in the same place. She was from back east. I said, well, you do where I come from, because I was painting the mountains as I had remembered them in Sardine Canyon. And my husband took that painting to his office and hung it in the foyer. And one day went in and it was gone. Somebody had stole it. I didn't know whether to be pleased that they stole it for the painting or did they steal it for the frame and i never did find out but the painting was gone <laughs> um, later on we moved to minnesota and we moved into our new home there and there was a large window well it was about 10 feet wide and about six feet deep and it was in, down in our new finished basement and it didn't, I mean, you're looking at concrete block because they built homes out of concrete block back there, not concrete walls. And so Boyd says, Jean, paint the Golden Gate Bridge on that. Well, I looked at it and I only had like three feet from the wall to the concrete block wall. And I thought, I'm not going to be able to paint and get a perspective and stand back far enough to see. So I looked, counted the blocks, I drew them up to scale on a piece of paper, and then I sketched the bridge on that. Then when I got in the hole, I took that paper with me and I could tell where the parts of the bridge went. Well, it turned out really beautiful and we put spotlights on it. I took pictures of it. A lot of people had pictures and now I can't find a single one of them. Oh. <laughs> so that's a good story, but the boys know they, they saw it when they were there. <laughs> and uh, 
Then while we were in the painting classes, um, our teacher assigned us that we should do a portrait. And so I chose to do this portrait of my mother, my grandmother, and my great grandmother. Okay. And my great grandma, I I can even remember her. I was not quite three when she died, but I can remember her like yesterday. So anyway, that's some of and then some of my other paintings. Uh, they're flashing through on the screen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Minnesota, known as the land of ice and snow. I, in fact, I usually call it Minnesota. Uh, <laughs> our boys all got into ski racing, and I started to make ski clothes for all of us. And they would wear their new ski outfits to the races, and their friends would say, well, where did you get your ski suit? Well, my mom made it. So I had their parents come and asking me to make ski suits for them. So then I got the harebrained idea that maybe I would make start a ski wear company. And uh, I made a bunch of different ski clothes. And Mark was living out here in Utah at the time. And I sent him out here to Utah. And he got his friends. And they went up to Snowbird. And they had all these photos taken. And I used that as my brochure to try to sell my ski wear. And uh, the boys were always coming home with bruises all up and down their arms and legs from hitting the gates as they went down the slalom course. So then I came up with the idea of making a padded suit to protect their bodies. And I had a company uh, make the pads for me. It's made in strips. And then I would just cut that pad to fit the, the arm or leg of wherever I was using it. And then I would stitch the fabric onto it. And I took all these things to Las Vegas to a ski show. Had a lot of attention, but didn't really get any orders. And the next year, Descent and Spider, which were the two major manufacturers of ski wear clothing, had copied my suit. <laughs> so anyway, I kind of gave up after that. And uh, I did, though, make uh, jackets for both Sundance and Snowbird ski schools. And What? Are you going to? Oh, yeah, I did make, I did make, besides racing clothes, I did make clothes for uh, ladies and other things. And that's a vest and a suit, one piece suit. And that's just a jacket. And that's Oh yeah, and then they. Um, what kind of sewing machine did you use? I didn't use Bernina's. Just a serger. Or I had a serger, and I had, uh, I had a couple of sergers, and I had, uh, I think five Berninas in my shop. I had gals that worked for me, and the boys went, or well, all of the boys and girls, as they would get ready to race, they're standing up at the top of the hill. And especially the, when they're doing downhill, their suits are not warm. They're very thin. So they're cold. So I made, I designed these pants. And they're insulated. And they zip completely apart so they can put them on and off with their skis on. And, and that way they could keep, keep warm until they were ready to go down the hill and unzip and throw them aside and off they went. <laughs> so... Um, and when the boys grew up and uh, became young adults, I made sport coats for all of them. And uh, after they'd worn them for a few years and we were moving, I put them in a garage sale. And then a few years later, I was called to jury duty. And in comes one of the jurors wearing one of my coats. Oh my <laughs> I was quite surprised, but I never did say anything to him about it. But then Ultra's weight came out, and I designed, or I made that one for my husband Boyd, and he wore that one many years. And uh, then uh, my dad was having, it was his 90th birthday. And we were still in Minnesota, and we couldn't come out to celebrate his birthday. So I wrote a poem for him. This was the first time I'd really written a poem. And I used the letters uh, in his name 
to begin the first line of each of the each of the lines in the poem. And he, I sent it, I mailed it out to him. I thought, well, first of all, I copied it by hand. And if you look afterwards, you can look close and see some of the stitches, not stitches, words, <laughs> letters are a little crooked. But anyway, I did that for him. And he had that hanging in his house many years. And after he passed away, they gave it to me. And uh, my other son, who's not here, uh, he and his wife were living in a small duplex back in Minnesota. And they had two daughters and were expecting another son. And uh, they needed a bigger house. So we went to a parade of homes and we found a builder who we thought that looked like he did good work. So Gary and I drew up the plans. Well, we didn't draw the plans, we just did a sketch. And then we gave it to him and he had it turned into plans and, and we got the house started. Well, then he kind of disappeared. And, and Gary and I really ran the organization of the project for the whole time till the house was built. Well, when it was finished, the guy comes back and he was impressed and so he wanted us to go into business with him. So we did, we went to a lawyer and set up the company and I came up with the name of Mark 10 Custom Homes. Mark being the sign of quality and 10 being the highest. And the next year we built two parade homes and a custom home. And then, no, that's not the one. And then uh, after we were all through, we found out that he wasn't a very good guy. And so we split up the company and I did go take uh, the course that this county gave for uh, to be a general contractor. So I became the general contractor. And then the next year, I completely designed this home up here. And uh, that we had that two-story curved stairway in it. And I went over there one day and the guys were having a hard time trying to figure out how to put that molding that went around the stairs and down. And I looked at it and I thought, hmm, that looks like the shape of a sleeve, you know, that you put into a dress. So I told them how they should cut the molding. They thought I was crazy, but they tried it and it worked. <laughs> so, and uh, then after after that home was, I did actually live in it for a few months because my husband had left the company back in Minnesota and was working out here in Utah. And uh, I stayed in the house because of property taxes. It made it much less expensive, but the owner lived in the house, so I did that. And uh, then I came out here and we built uh, th two homes up at Jeremy Ranch. And the, the one is my, uh, oh, yeah, the, the parade home I did back in Minnesota. I forgot to have Janet show you this. I was also in real estate, so I was the realtor of that house. <laughs> and that's the brochure I put together for that house. And, uh, Let's see. <coughs> anyway, we built the two homes up at Jeremy Ranch, and then one day a fellow who was uh, in my husband's office mentioned to him that they were going to build a new house. And my husband says, well, why don't you talk to my wife, Jean? She builds houses. <laughs> so anyway, I invited him and his wife up to see our home up at Jeremy Ranch, and they were impressed, and they had me design and build their home. It was a very difficult lot. The lot sloped from where the garage went in, and then then you went up to the the uh, main floor, and then you went up another flight to get to the master bedroom, which was on the ground, and it was up a whole flight of stairs from the main floor. But anyway, I designed that house. It's up in the Canyon Co uh, Olympus Olympus Cove area here in Salt Lake, and. Uh, after we got that one done, then we went to uh, building our son Steve, his home, and it's out in Sandy. And uh, it turned out to be a beautiful home. And then we built Mark's home. Oh, and I got Mark being a builder with me. I drug him into this when we were building the home at Jeremy Ranch. <laughs> and he's become a very excellent builder. And when we got all three of the boys' homes done, why, 
it was time to build my home. And we bought a lot up in Bountiful, and uh, I designed that home. Oh, when I started on Steve's home, I started to draw the blueprints myself. And when I built the house for the other guy on the bad lot, I, it was so complicated, I decided that it would be easier for the builders if they had a scale model. So I made a scale model, and they used that, and that helped them a lot. And then when we did my house in Bountiful, I, I did that scale model. And I had finished it up one night and brought it the next day, and the glue was still wet, so the roof is all covered with sawdust. <laughs> it's 25 years old, and it's been through a lot. <laughs> And uh, now we have some, that this is my home in Bountiful. And we have some interior photos of it. Um, this is, we have a spa, custom, custom made spa down in the basement. And I gathered up a lot of the rock for that, just gathered it up out of the neighborhood area. And uh, then the stairwell, we had the pool at the bottom of the stairwell and a waterfall. And then we bought some clear rock and put rock behind that clear rock. I mean, not the rock, lights behind the clear rock. And uh, then we had bedspreads. Sawyer. Oh, okay. Yeah, one of the one the favorite feature in the house was my sewing room, and I had designed this table and had the. Um, carpet cabinetry people build that for me and it folds right up in the cupboard door shut and you wouldn't know it's there but in 25 years it's only been up once and that's when we had company and I had to turn that room into a bedroom for them <laughs> the rest of the time is down and it's my sewing and cutting table <laughs> okay and this is my living room and uh, that just shows, and then we have a spectacular view out those windows. When we were building and we put the floor on and I stood up there and I said, those windows are never gonna be covered. So, uh, <clears throat> now are we to the, okay, I made this bedspread and it's hand quilted and the design on it matched the tile, the decorative tile that was in the bathroom. And, uh, that lasted about 15 years and it was antique satin and then it started to split, the fabric did. So I gave up on it and then I made this next set. And uh, I made all the pillows to go with it. And then I, I purchased the top towels but then I decorated them to match the bedspread and the rest of the room. So, and let's see, after I finally quit building houses, well, I did do, uh, oh, this, this bedspread, that was down in one of my guest bedrooms. And I had Mark build a headboard for me, and then I upholstered it. And then that bedspread, I used to go home and quilt it at night after we worked on the house all day long. In, in, I was running from Jeremy Ranch to Bountiful every day. And I did that up at Jeremy Ranch. Up at Jeremy Ranch. <laughs> okay, and uh, okay, I had some things in the fair. And that little dress is one I did for one of my great grandkids. And uh, let's see, where are we? Yeah. Th these are some others. I have a all these little baby clothes from my great grandkids are over here. And we won't take time to show each one of them, but we'll show you a few of them. I made little ruffled panties to go with each one. And that's the little boys with a tie. And then I did the crochet dresses. In fact, I did three like that, one for each of my three little granddaughters. And uh, that was for Fourth of July. Yes? Do you ever sleep? Not much. <laughs> Not much, no, I don't. <laughs> and uh, let's see, where are we? Oh, this was my three uh, granddaughters. And I made them all dresses alike, except they each had a different sleeve so they could tell them apart. <laughs> and 
Let's see. Okay, those are outfits I made for the little baseball sweater. His daddy was a big baseball fan. And then the other two little girls, the little crochet dress. And, and uh, anyway, I've got right now 10 grandchildren, and in the next two weeks, I'll have two more great grandchildren. Yeah, I've got two, two new little great grand, grand boys coming. <laughs> so, uh, oh, okay. The one, the one baby. When he was when he was born, his his the dad that loved the baseball. So I made him that little baseball suit. I made the suit and the shoes and the belt and the hat. I even made the hat. Oh, wow. And uh, then I had a grandson who was three, and he loved Spider Man. So I started to make this little Spider Man suit, and I thought, oh, it's not big enough for him. So then I thought, okay, I'll make a doll. So I made the doll and put the suit on the doll. Then I made the one big enough for him, and everybody fussed over him, and, and he was so excited. And then I handed him the doll, and he threw it, and he says, I said, Skyler, that's your friend. It's not my friend. <laughs> he didn't want anything to do with that doll. So I have written a little poem on it that says, when you get old enough, you can give it to one of your sons. <laughs> and uh, after that, I got into sewing with uh, fake fur and fleece. And I, I did a lot of things. I did, this is a coat that I made for myself, which I wear every winter. And I made vests for all of the girls in the family, and I made two for myself. I have that one and a darker one. And, uh, and then that's a fleece one, and I did that one just for lighter springtime things, uh, for like playing golf or something that's not so bulky. <clears throat> then, uh, 45 years ago, my son was on a mission in uh, Taiwan, and we went to Taiwan to meet him there and bring, have him come home with us. And I knew I couldn't be there with nothing to do, so I got the harebrained idea to make this uh, shawl uh, of afghan. Yeah. And that's made in individual strips. So that was easy to work on on the airplane and while I was traveling around Taiwan. So I made that one, and that matched my house in Minnesota. And then last year, I made this one. This is all done in one big piece. And I made that to go with my house that I'm living in right now. And then I started to knit sweaters and shawls for myself. And this is one of the sweaters that I did. And uh, I also made the jewelry that goes with it. And it also has a shawl. I didn't bring that. And <clears throat> I had been to the chiropractor. And when I came out, I noticed that there was a bead shop right next door. And I had not seen that before. So I went in. And I found uh, stuff to make a pair of earrings. So I went home, made the earrings. I was hooked. <laughs> Not on the earrings, just hooked. <laughs> and then I went back and started buying more stuff and making more jewelry. And then I even went to the point of get, finding a wholesale supply place. And uh, I used them and still use them. And I make jewelry for everything I where sometimes I buy gems and then I make the outfit to match the gems, and sometimes I buy the gems to make the match the outfit. So <clears throat> anyway, uh, let's see. I'm lost. <laughs> oh yeah, while I was making the beads. Uh, and I, I started beating everything I made. And that dress, I, when I make dresses, I use my own design. I don't use commercial patterns. And I dry out the design where I'm going to put the beads on. And, and that entire dress is beaded. And then I started making purses to go with everything. And, and then jewelry as well. So. Uh, and you have time to be here today. 
<laughs> when I thought, yeah. how do you have time to be here today? I was <laughs> just so busy. <laughs> Sleep well, let's see. These are just showing some of the other outfits that I've made over the last few years. And those roses are all handmade out of fabric. Where are you getting your fabrics? I get um, most of it from Joann's. Every once in a while, I will order some over the internet. And uh, then I started, I, I went to church one day and a lady had on a crocheted skirt. And I looked at that skirt and I thought, hmm, I could do that. So I then I thought, well, I'll not just make a skirt, I'll make a top to go with it as well. So then I started making crocheted outfits. And I have six of them. That one is done with the little roses. And I've made uh, I've made six different crochet dresses and I'm wearing the last one I made. Stand out so you can see it. Oh, so elegant. And they're very heavy because <laughs> they, they all have all these beads on them. To stand out here where we can see this beautiful outfit. Thank you. Oh, and this one has a handbag too. Where that thing? Yeah, right there. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, each one of them has. Have their own handbag. And uh, Jean, have you thought of going to New York City? No. I'm <laughs> taking this. I'm too old to think of things like that. I'm the same age you are. <laughs> are you going to go? <laughs> oh dear. Oh, anyway, I've just done all this stuff just because it's fun. And in, uh, I'm I gotta take a drink, I'm sorry. I have my lemon juice and honey. <laughs> In 2005, I entered the Ms. Utah Senior America contest. Oh, we didn't talk about this one. And this is one of the dresses that I made, and the fabric was just silver and white. And so I decided to bead it. And I put all those beads on it. Bring it closer. Okay. And again, this is my own design. And I made the handbag. You're as good as Chanel is. And the jewelry. I guess I haven't got the jewelry on there, have I? I'm sorry. It's on the picture. Yeah, there's the jewelry. Oh, and the, the shawl is made with scarf yarn. Some of you probably have used scarf yarn, and that's all made with scarf yarn. Where do you wear these gorgeous things? Well, usually to the Senior America pageant. <laughs> so when I was in the Senior America pageant in 2005, um, I did a display and a poem. And I'm going to tell you that the poem I made up for my part on the program at that time. I heard about this contest. It sounded really fun, so I signed up. I met some folks, made friends with everyone. They said it was for older gals. On that I qualified. And then I heard that dreaded word, I very nearly died, talent. What's your talent, Mrs. Jones? Do you sing or dance? Oh no, I cried, I can't do that. I'll surely have no chance. My talent lie in working with my hands and with my heart. Well, I'll just put together a display for my art. I began to sew most all my clothes while still in middle school. At 16, I made a wedding dress and I won Make It Yourself with Wool. I later made my own bright gown then sold for my family. I dressed us all for winter when we all learned to ski. I made clothes for racing quickly down the hill. Soon other skiers ordered suits to help them win as well. As each son grew and married, I dressed his lovely bride. 
Sometimes I dressed the bridesmaids for standing by their side. And when they needed shelter for their growing families, I took pad and pencil and drew up plans. You see, I turned them into blueprints. I hired on a crew. I supervised the building, tiled and decorated. Whew. <laughs> After building many houses with lots of working time, I finally built my own dream home when I truly could call mine. I designed and quilted bedspreads. I made some headboards too, and I draped all the windows in the house when it was new. I painted lots of paintings for hanging in my halls, and I did some counting cross stitch to decorate my walls. All clothes and jewelry that I wore from that competition start, plus all you see on display, came from my hands and heart. I hope you will enjoy my little presentation. It's my treat to share with you the results of my creation. So that's what I did when I went to the national pageant. However, I didn't win, but I did get involved and I came director for the Utah chapter for three years. And oh, this is the dress I made to wear to the national pageant. And at that time, dresses with trains were very popular. So I made a train on it and uh, the shawl. And then they told us, you have to have a white dress for the opening number. Well, can you imagine all us old ladies, all of us over 60 and up there in white dresses? Well, anyway, I designed my own white dress, so I hoped it didn't look like a wedding dress. And uh, that's all beaded with Swarovski crystals. And the lace is all hang sewn on. And uh, let's see. Um, Oh, the books. Yeah, when I was director, I started making uh, books for the pageants and with pictures of everybody. And we even sold ads in the books to help pay for the printing. And after that, about 2011, why my husband and I decided we needed to do a family book. So we put together this book and uh, he bought me a program that I could use on the internet to, or on the computer to place the, the, the pictures in the right places and then we sent it to a printer and had it printed for each of our children and grandchildren. And uh, then I was bored so I started doing cross stitch. And this first group, there are six Thomas Kincaid paintings and I did each one of those. And I've got six grandchildren, so I've said each one of the grandkids can have one of those when I'm gone. Right now, they're all hanging on the wall. And then I started doing some that were a little more complicated. And my husband had passed away six years ago, and I decided I wanted to do one of him. So I took the picture of when he first entered the Air Force, when he was a second lieutenant, and I didn't want to do a all that work in beige. So I sent it to a company and said, turn it the Air Force, turn it to the Air Force blue color. And then they sent that picture back to me and then I sent it to another company who turned it into a pattern so I could make the, the picture. And the first one I got done and my other granddaughter saw it and she said, Jane, that looks just like Gary. You gotta give it to him. And I thought, well, okay. So then I thought I'll make two more. So I made one for each of the other two boys. Well, then one day I was bored and nothing to do and I went down and I found I had enough fabric and I still had the pattern. And so I started on another one and I made, the, this is the last one I did and I made that for myself. And uh, the other cross stitch pictures, um, this one over here, this wooded snow scene, I, uh, while I was working on that, I didn't like it at all. But when I got it finished and took it to be framed, and my son looked at it and he said, Mom, I love that, I want it. <laughs> and so now I'm trying to do one for, that's a, not a, not a flower one, but one for each of the three boys. And uh, let's see, did we already show the other one? Yeah, we showed it. We showed it to back. No, the, 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 no the, on the screen, this one. Oh. Yeah, so that one's not a, that's not a flower one. So I figured the boys can have those two, and then I'm doing one now of Lake and Mountains. 
So, <laughs> uh, anyway, over the years, starting from when I was 16, I've made a total of nine wedding dresses. And the, I made mine, I mean, with my cousins and then mine. And then the next one I made was for my oldest son, Gary. And that is his wife's over there. And uh, then after that one, we made one for Mark's wife. And I don't have that one, but that's her picture right there. She did not want a veil. She wanted a hat. So I made her the hat. And then, uh, yeah, this is the first wife. And this is Steve and, and his wife, Kim. And we didn't bring her dress here today. But uh, then after I got the girl, the grandchildren, the granddaughters growing, my oldest granddaughter had served a mission in Brazil. And when she got married, she says, Grandma, I want red and gold beads on my wedding dress. Michelle, red and gold, you can't wear that in a temple. And she says, I'm not, I'm wearing my temple dress. And she had a temple dress that was a beautiful one that I'd made for her before. So I said, well, if you're gonna have red and gold, we should put it on cream, red, ivory, rather than white, because it looked better. And I, I designed that dress and made, uh, dyed the white lace in tea to get it the ivory color. And each piece of lace took me about six hours to put the beads on it. And then I hand sewed that onto the dress. And if you'll notice, the dress is, is uh, Wow. Oh, oh my the hem is shaped to match the, the shape of the lace. You can look at all these things when yeah, after I'm through here. And, and the poster over there, I put it in the state fair and I put that poster together to go with it at the state fair. And uh, let's see. Oh, and then my, my other granddaughter, when I made this one, she said, well, Grandma, I don't want beads on my wedding dress. <laughs> well, a few years later, this is her wedding dress. <laughs> and it has over 80,000 beads on it. I didn't count them individually, but I counted the numbers of boxes of beads that I put on it. <laughs> and uh, unfortunately, time has changed the sequence to kind of a yellow color, but... She said, don't worry about it. I'm not going to, I don't want to change it at this point in time. So, uh, and then one day my little great granddaughter was visiting here from California and she loved to come to grandma's and make things. So we were, she was making bracelets and she made two bracelets for herself and then one for a friend. And then she said, grandma, can we make a puppy? And I said, well, we don't have time to make a puppy now because we've got to go to our aunt's for dinner. So anyway, I told her, I said, I'll make you a puppy and send it out to California. And she says, well, my make one for my friend too. So I made two puppies, gave them to my daughter-in-law to take to California. And she said, my daughter-in-law said, Jane, you can't give that to her and not give one to the other kids. So I made nine puppies. <laughs> And I happened to have all that fabric left over from fur mess that I was able to make all those nine different puppies. <laughs> and then our stake was having a road show and they requested my assistance. And since they asked me nicely, I offered no resistance. <laughs> I asked them what the program was. Oh, it will be a blast. We're doing the story of Noah, and there's animals in the cast. <laughs> they asked if I could make headbands and add some ears to that. Oh, I can do much better. I'll make an animal hat. I spent two days just horsing around, <laughs> thinking of what I could do. I dreamed up patterns and found the cloth I needed to make my zoo. I started on my project, then said to myself, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I mixed them up, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what have I gotten into? It's an elephant task. That's clear. Well, 
I've got to quit just lying around. Get busy. I have no staff. To ever see over this project, I'll need a neck that's like a giraffe. It's a bear of a job. It's making me dizzy. Take the bull by the horns and get yourself busy. I cut and I sewed till zebra caused me pain. <laughs> I felt like a cow. I was seeing no gain. I felt like a sheep being led to the slaughter. Wish I had a helper, maybe a daughter. <coughs> we need another animal. I think that was the quote. Make a pair of unicorns. Don't let them miss the boat. <laughs> then I thought that maybe I could cheat a little bit. <laughs> but that would not be honest. Just keep working. Do not quit. I decided I must work much harder and stop my monkeying round. <laughs> I'll finish up my project before I rabbit underground. <laughs> so now my zoo is finished and I've animals everywhere. They're ready to board the ark where they'll be in Noah's care. As Noah and his family quickly sail away, I hope our show is successful and the highlight of your day. Okay. I got my thing that I've lost it. So that is the end of my story, but not what I want to create. My hands must always stay busy. I'm up early and I stay up so late. As time passes on and I'm thinking, what is the next thing I'll do? I'll get busy and find a new project and work on it till I am through. I pray that as long as I'm living, I'll always find time to create and my hands and my brain and my eyesight will allow me to do something great. Thank you. Any questions? If, yeah, do you have any questions? Wow. <laughs> There's nothing left to be said. That was amazing. And what anyway, did I do well, with my life? <laughs> well, you're yeah, free to look around and, and uh, stuff is crowded, so hopefully you won't trip over anything. But you're free to look at the things if you'd like to. Yes. Tell us about the yeah. curse. Huh? Oh, wait a minute. We forgot the curse. Oh, man. Yes. Yes. Uh, I started making purses. I make most all my purses, and this is when I did enter in the fair, and I did win a first place with that. What's that made from? Huh? This is a wool, a suede fabric. Yeah. Oh. And I've, I've got pockets everywhere, and uh, again, I sometimes I look at pictures, but now I've got a full paper, but it's got. Pockets for cell phones and zipper pockets inside and all kinds of things. Show them your suit, Jill. We forgot to show the suit. Your suit on the end. The what? Your suit on the end. Oh. Her, her batteries went out of her. And <laughs> yeah, not only do I make fancy clothes, I make clothes to wear to church and for every day. And this is a suit that I've made. And again, I designed the flower part and hand sewed that on there. And uh, make the the handbag to match, and and always jewelry to match. And where do you get your beads for your making your jewelry? Um, I get most of the stuff from a company up in Oregon called Fire Mountain Gems, and I just order it. They they used to send a big catalog. They don't do that anymore. But a lot of stuff is online, and I just go through and pick out what I want and order it and, and uh, yeah, did, maybe everybody did get to see that over here. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, and then with each suit that I make, 
I always wear this a skirt and pants. So I can wear it any place. <laughs> And my hand bag. As I said, you're welcome to come up and, and look. And I thank you for your time and all the joy that you